Hello, my name is Apoor and I work with Civic Data Lab. At Civic Data Lab, our goal is to make public data sets more accessible and actionable. We do this by building open data platforms and by working with our partners to process and analyze this data so that public data can be used as a tool for civic engagement. Earlier, I was part of the data teams at Mu Sigma, Ola, and Social Corps, where I got a chance to work with a lot of diverse data sets. Now, R has always been a go-to tool for me when it comes to data mining, data analysis, data visualization, or even building websites. Over a series of sessions, we look at how we can use R to process and analyze a very interesting data set of 2019 Indian parliamentary elections. So let's get started. In this session, we'll be looking at the project website that we have developed for this course. And we'll also look at how to process one of the data sets, one of the very important constituency data sets that we'll be using for the analysis. So the first page you see on this website is the overview. Now this page contains links to all the analysis that we'll be doing using this data set. It also contains links to the data sets that we are using in this analysis. So mostly we'll be working with the data sets from the Election Commission of India. The link is here. So all the links to the uh, all the links to resources such as data sets, scripts, documents, reports, etc. that we'll be using in this analysis are present in the repo. Uh, the kind of analysis we, we can do or we will do, uh, uh, you can see are also listed here and there can be a lot more. Uh, and there are also references to a few books that we have used for the analysis. The other important section of, the, of this website is the setup page. Now it's always a good thing to do, especially whenever uh, you are following a session or you are uh, uh, following a project. It's good if you can reproduce everything on your local machine. So the setup instructions that we have here will help you to reproduce this entire project in your local machine or, or your local setup. The kind of packages that we are using for this course are also listed here and you can use this function to um, uh, download or install all the packages in one go. Now, the other important thing or the main objective of this session is to uh, process a data set or process a constituency data set. Uh, we also have a process page uh, where you can uh, follow the instructions uh, to you know, process a data set. Now, we, we'll, we'll, we'll look at what this data set is about and how to go about the processing, but I'm just first explaining you the, how the website is structured. So let's just start. Let's just start with the now because we are at the processing page. So let's just start with okay, what are, what are we what are we even doing in this uh, course? What are the kind of data sets we'll be using? How to process it? Where are we trying to reach? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So let's just start with point number one, which is listed here, which says, or, or let me also zoom in a bit so that it's clearer. So the first thing. Obviously, whenever you start processing a data set is you first download the data set or you first look at how the raw data is looking like. So first, let's look at there are two important data sets that we'll be using. First is the constituency data. Second is the candidate data. So first, let's look at what the constituency data looks like. And if you can see, uh, uh, if you click on any of this, this will take you to the raw data set in this case, which is the Election Commission of India's website. So I have already opened a page. So this is the page for the constituency data summary report. Uh, now this basically contains a data summary for all the 543 constituencies. So let's just look at how uh, the structure of this data set. So if I click on download the file, so there are two options. The first one is I can download a PDF and the second one is I can download an XLS file. So uh, I have already downloaded both these files. So first let's look at how the two look at the basic structure of the website it's it's good to open it as a pdf and we already have a pdf downloaded so let's just look at how this data set looks like so as you can see since by the name itself this is a constituency data summary which means that it contains summary for all the constituencies that are uh, that were a part of the parliamentary elections of 2019 and there were 543 constituencies so let's just look at what the kind of variables that we have here. So the first con constituency, and we can take it as a sample, is Aruku. Uh, it is an ST constituency. Now the variables are, you have the total number of candidates, total male candidates, total female candidates. You also have the total number of electors, 
disaggregated by gender similarly you have the total number of voters disaggregated by gender and you have the total number of votes now the difference between an elector and a voter is elector is the total pe- uh, people who are eligible to vote whereas voters is people who actually voted so electors will always be more than voters uh going down we can also see that we also have the uh, valid postal votes or total valid votes polled of poll uh, votes that were polled from the voting machine so those numbers are also available and then very important you have the date on which the election took place date on which the counting took took place and date on which the result was declared and finally the final section of this uh, of the constituency data summary for each constituency you will have the result section where you will see who the winner was who the run up runner up was and the margin of votes uh, ma- sorry the winning margin you will also have the name of the candidate who won the election and the runner up's name as well so it looks like there are a lot of important variables in the sheet uh, and another interesting thing to look at if i go to another constituency uh, which is in this case shri kakulam and it's a general constituency so here you see that the for all the constituencies the data is structured in an exactly similar way like there is no difference uh, each variable is where it was let's say for the first constitu- constituency uh, you will have the candidate name the number of electors the number of voters the total number of votes the candidates uh, the dates of polling and the result so these are all the five five to six sections that are present for each constituency now uh you might ask now how we will process this pdf now before we start processing the pdf let's also look at what uh, is the structure of the excel file we have so i have already downloaded this excel file now looking at it it's a bit different from the pdf that we just saw and obviously because uh, you know here you will an excel file gives you more flexibility to uh, curate data or store data so here you can see the first row so the the first important thing uh, you will see here is the pdf was every constituency had a couple of pages here every constituency has one sheet so if i right click on this small arrow that you see so i can see i can uh, so this gives me a list of all the the, the the 543 sheets that are part of this excel file so so11 so12 s stands for state so the first so this the how you read this is for the first state this is the first constituency sheet number 1 or constituency number 1 similarly for first state this is constituency number 2 so this is how the data is structured in the excel file so before you begin data processing or uh, it's very important to understand how the excel file is structured so basically how this is structured structured is you have one sheet for each constituency so which means you have five in total 543 sheets another pattern you will notice here is if i go from s01-1 to s01-2 i can see that the structure of the file is not changing the numbers are changing but the structure of the file is not changing if you observe here if i go alternate between these sheets only the numbers are changing the structure is not changing which is a very important thing to notice because it gives us a clue to how to process this data set uh if i uh, i'm looking at the sheet for the first time what uh, i will do is i will try and write the code to process data for just one sheet and then i will see if the code can be if if i can run the same code for all the 543 sheets that saves me so much of time imagine that if i am manually entering this data in a database now i will have to you know enter data for 543 sheets but here i will just write code for one sheet and run the same code for 543 sheets now this is important because the structure is not changing only the number is changing all right so now let's finally the uh, let's look at how we will process this these 543 sheets but again before we do that uh it's also important to uh check where are we trying to reach 
because when we look at the code it will give it will help us visualize the uh, or it will help us visualize the uh, it, it's it's important to visualize the final structure of where do we want to reach when we are writing the code and since we have already written this code since we have, also, we have the final results with us so it's easier to visualize in this case so this is how the final sheet looks like so as you can see you have 500 and so this says 544 lines the first line is for the header um, so it basically means this data is for 543 constituencies there are 543 rows so from 543 sheets you are reaching to 543 rows this is where we want to reach and as you can see all the variables that were present in different rows of the excel file have been converted to columns so whatever variable we we need have been converted to columns so you can see that there are close to 70 or 80 columns present in this uh, in this file or maybe less this is the final version but the idea is to convert the excel sheet into this uh, into one file which can be stored as a csv file a very simple comma separated value file so now let's look at the code so i'm again going back to the data processing uh, a data processing uh, guide and here you will find the link to the code so if you look if you read uh, step number two it says please refer to the file to follow the steps to process data for each constituency now if i open this file if i click on this file you will land here now let me just zoom in this page a bit so this code is on github uh, which is a because this is this is an open repository you can read the code you can also clone this repository in your local machine and run this code uh, so you will find all the links in the project website.